All right, now we're going to start talking about what happens when investments or loans or things like that are compounded more than once per year. That's where we have to be able to figure out what the annual effective rate. So imagine you're paying, imagine you want to invest some money into a bank account that pays 10% um, compounded semi-annually. What this means is this doesn't mean that you're getting 10% interest at six months and then 10% interest again at one year, which would basically just make this twice as good, like that would be the same as having a two-year investment uh, at 10% that is just compounded annually. That's not what we're talking about. When you see this uh, compounded semi-annually here, basically what it means is you take the number, well the number of times that you're compounding, in this case semi-annually would be two, and you divide it by that this 10%. So we get 10 divided by 2 is going to give us 5%. And however many times in the year you're compounding, this is the rate that you're going to get in your interest. So Basically, 10% compounded semi-annually is going to pay you 5% interest after 6 months, and then 5% interest again compounded but uh, after 12 months. You can imagine if we're compounding quarterly, uh, we're going to we're going to have, you know, 10 over 4. We're going to have four payments, so the rate that we're paying out is 2.5%, but we're going to compound this four times per year. So that you know, just making sure that you see that compounding quarterly isn't four times uh, four times as much money as you know compounding once a year it's just a little bit better and we're going to get into why this is so annual effective rate i what we have here is one plus r over m where r is the interest rate that you're given so that would be this 10 percent here m is the number of compounds per year if it's semi-annually this number is going to be two right that's what we did right here 10 over two uh or if it was uh compounding quarterly it's going to be a four and then up here we just have m times n. What we're doing is we're just going to do this for one year uh, to find the annual effective rate. So that will just become a 1. And uh, yeah, we'll be able to solve this problem. So what we want to do is we want to find out um, you know, if we're compounding at 5% twice, is that better than compounding at 10% once? Well, obviously it'll be a little bit better, but not definitely not double. Well, let's do this. So we're going to have our formula is for i. Maybe we'll change color. So we're going to have i is equal to 1 plus 0 0.1 over 2 and m times n. So we'll have 2 times 1 all minus 1. This will reduce to we will have 1.05 squared minus 1. And we'll get our annual interest or annual effective rate is actually going to be 0 0.1025 uh, and we can also write this as 10.25 percent so basically what I'm saying is if you compound 10.25 percent annually so just once at the end of a year uh, you're gonna have this that would be exactly the same as compounding 10 percent semi-annually so paying out basically two payments of five percent and then compounding them so let's just do a little rough sketch here um, without without using this formula and I'm going to show you why this works so imagine you have um, imagine you have a hundred dollars and what you want to do is uh, you're going to compound semi-annually so we'll, up here we'll have years we'll have half a year one year one and a half years um, two years uh, let's, let's go up to three years okay 2.5 and then three years so each time we're compounding, we're basically just going to be multiplying, adding on a 5%. So you just multiply uh, times 1.05, right? So that would be just 100 times 1.05. Well, actually, let's we'll fill it in as we go. Uh, so that would be $105. 105 times 1.05 is going to be $110.25, right? So all I've done here is I've just added on 5% of the 100, and then I've added on 5% of this 105. And you see that it's you know, we're actually, we've actually made a little bit more than 10% here. Okay, so we're going to continue this on. So we'll just keep adding, uh, multiplying by 1.05, which adds 5% onto this total. So uh, we will get, after 1.5 years, you would have $115.76. And we'll, you will just do this. You just always add uh, or multiply by 1.05. And I'll just fill in the rest of the value so you don't have to listen to me talking. Okay, 121.55, we'd get 127.63. And lastly, after three years, you'd get $134.01. Okay, that's just doing it without a formula based on what I've told you here. 
So now let's use the formula and find out if this is true. So what we want to do is we use the future value of uh, a compounding interest investment. So that is future value is equal to present value times 1 plus i, this is the annual interest rate, uh, times the number of years. So for n equals 1, let's do n equals 2 and n equals 3. All right, so we're going to get a present value. So we will have uh, 100 times 1 point. And remember we said this is compounding semi-annually. Uh, we found this to be 10.25%, so 1.1025, right? That's just 1 plus 0. Point, uh, 1 plus 0 0.1025 to the power of 1. Okay, and this is going to give us, if you do this in your calculator, well, you don't even need to raise it to the power of 1, actually, and you can just see that this is going to give us 110.25 dollars. Okay, so now if we had two years, we'd have 100 times 1.1025 squared. If you punch this in your calculator, square this first, multiply it by 100, and we're going to see that we're actually going to get the same thing. We're going to get $121.55. And lastly, if we have n is equal to 3, we have 100 times 1.1025 to the power of 3 for 3 years. And we're going to get a value of, it'll be exactly the same if you cube this and then multiply by 100, you'll get $134.01. So there you go. That's a little bit of explanation about why this annual effective rate works the way that it does. And sometimes this is helpful to look at this, um, this almost sort of table that we've made just to understand that, you know, um, again, if we were if we were compounding quarterly, this, you know, we'd be multiplying by 2.5% each time instead of, uh, instead of 5%, but it would be, you know, four times a year instead of twice a year. All right, I'll see you in the next video, and we'll go over comparing uh, some different um, compounding periods on the same investment.